Recently, ACF and ACF Pro have had a bit of a checkered pass being kind of pushed around to various different companies. Well, WP Engine bought it recently, and this is their first major update, being the version 6. It's not yet released, this is just a beta, but we're going to take a quick look at some of the changes. Now, quick disclaimer, these are only really cosmetic changes. There are some little tweaks for enhancements, but most of it is back-end updates to make changes, to bring it in line and make it a little bit more modern and fresh compared to what it has been in the past. So let's take a quick look, first of all, at the interface itself, and then we can take a quick look at some of the changes. I'll link to the article about the actual beta and all the information about what's been included in it, but let's take a quick look at that dashboard update. So once you've installed it and you log in and you go into your custom fields and your field group, you will see it looks a little different. We've got a banner across the top, then we've got the main area we start creating our field groups. But once you get into things, that's when you start to see some of the changes. So let's go ahead and click to add a new field group. And you'll immediately see things have changed inside you. No longer do we have one long full screen. We know how things broken down into tabs. So all the same information is here, but it's broken down into more manageable chunks. So you can see general validation presentation and conditional logic. If we scroll down underneath, you can see there's our location rules, presentation, and our group settings. So we can customize these in the same way that we always have done. So visually, it does look better. For me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this tabbed way of working, I kind of like the way you used to have it in one main screen. But this does bring it up to date and also I'll probably get used to it as I start working with it more. I'm kind of just used to the way that ACF has pretty much always looked all the time that I've been using it. The other thing to note is that we have better accessibility features for people using keyboards. So that's integrated into this update. So again, I would recommend checking out the article over on ACF's website, which will give you more information on that. So if you are interested in accessibility, check that out. Okay, so let's take a quick look now at the interface. You can see we've got our general where we can go ahead and choose our different kinds of field type. Now I have ACF Pro installed, so I have the full set of features. If you were using the free version, some of these won't be available, things like repeater regions and so on. You can see we can choose all the normal options. I'll leave this as text for now, just for a moment. And you can see we can then come in, we can set our label. So we'll just call this location, for example. Our field name still automatically populates. We can put in a default value if we want. We've got help on each one of these individual entries so we can see exactly what we're doing. And if we take a look now, you can see we've got location, the name of this, and the type of field that we have. It's also more obvious what you can do with these different sections. Previously, this wasn't that obvious that you could move things around, open and close things. But once you kind of knew about it, becomes second nature, but for new users, it's nice to see that we have a more visual way of demonstrating you can expand these. You also notice we get the little positioning handles over on the left hand side so we can drag to reorder. Again, exactly the same as we could do before, but now we have a more visual way of seeing exactly what we could do. More akin to what we used to inside the WordPress dashboard itself. Hopping over to validation, you can see, do we want to make this a required field? If we do, we can just enable it. We can set a character limit. We can come into presentation. We can drop in our instructions, placeholder text, any prepend or append values. And we've also got the custom wrapper attributes for the width, the class, and the IDs. So nothing has really changed inside here. Conditional logic, do you want to enable it? If you do, then you can see all the same options are available inside here. And we can add rule groups and so on. So you can see everything we need is set up inside you. We also get this little sort of green check or this little green dot to say that conditional logic is enabled. If we disable that, that goes away. If we give it a validation, you can see we don't get the same thing there. So it would be nice to have a little red dot to denote the fact that validation is set as required. However, currently it's not. So maybe that's something that will watch this video and make those changes. Okay, so nothing's really changed there. Let's close that down a little bit. If we come into our settings underneath, you can see we can do exactly the same thing again. So all our normal options for how we want to choose where and when this particular field group is going to be used. So nice to see all that inside there. And again, all the same options are available. Depending upon what you choose in the first option, for example, if we say post taxonomy, you can see that now changes over and gives us different kinds of categories and tags that we can use. And we can set is equal to, not equal to, and so on. Again, we can add rule groups inside you. So all this is pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and add a new field group. This time we're going to change this over from the field type. We're going to set this to be the option for repeater. If we choose that, again, 
Same options there, we just had this visual update, but there are some new features inside you to make working with things like repeater regions just a little bit easier. Previously, it would load everything in and that could be time consuming if you had a lot of repeater regions. However, now we can go ahead and we can set this up to have pagination. So if we enable this, we can choose how many rows per page and then we can have pagination to make up loading things inside the admin side of your WordPress website quicker when you have a lot of data inside repeater regions. So it's good to see that we have optimization inside you as well. Now, if you are a Gutenberg user, you may want to check out the information in the article about ACF blocks. If there's some updates to this you may want to make note of. I'm not going to cover this. This is a bit more advanced than I want to show you, but check that out because you may find information that's very useful inside you about what support, any changes that have been made and things that may affect the way that you work using ACF with Gutenberg blocks. So check that out. Again, link in the description for you for that. Now, on top of that, there have been some translation improvements. So the community has been providing translations of various different languages for ACF. So if you are using a non-English version of ACF or ACF Pro, you may find that you have more translation options available to you. So again, check out the article to find exactly what's going on there. And this may have implications for you in the way that you work with ACF and ACF Pro. Now, finally, if we take a quick look at the full change log, you can see that we've got a few new features, but mostly a chunk of fixes alongside that visual update that we've seen. So, for example, like I've just shown you the pagination for the repeaters, ACF blocks, support for version 2 enabling of block JSON. There's ACF block IDs. There's enhancements to the bulk action for field groups. You've also got a bunch of fixes then. Now, if you want to test this out for yourself, only on a demonstration site, don't use this on a live site right now. It's out at RC3, in other words, release candidate three. So this means that the final version shouldn't be too far away. And these are just the final bug fixes, tweaks and enhancements that may need to be done before they can release the final version. So you can download it, test it on a test environment and see what you think of it. For me, like I say, the visual updates are nice to have. The accessibility is always a good thing. And it's going to take a little bit of getting used to having a tabbed way of working. However, chances are that's going to take a few hours and you're going to be up to speed and comfortable with the way that it all works. Pagination options inside the repeater region is going to make a nice optimal improvement for larger database entries. All in all, it's a pretty nice update, but nothing too radical for the first update since WP Engine have bought out ACF and ACF Pro. As always, I welcome your comments, questions and feedback. Drop those in the comment section below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.